feelings towards Johnny Mercer, uh, who I spoke to uh, earlier today. Uh, he's a former soldier, and I began by asking him why he decided to resign as the minister in charge of helping army veterans. Why I've resigned is because I made a promise at the dispatch box to bring through parallel legislation for veterans who served in Northern Ireland on the word of other ministers. That has not happened. I'm responsible for veterans' affairs. It's time to go. But who blocked it? It's not a question of blocking, and I'm really, you know, I'm not, I'm not getting into the sort of personalities of it. I, you know, there was a lot of, I have a lot of issues with the way uh, Westminster works, but one thing I'm not going to do is go after my uh, colleagues like that. But I will, I do think it needs to change, and I think uh, it's, uh, it'd be a lot more helpful if everyone sort of shot straight on all these matters all the time. Um, and I think, you know, that's, that's been a real problem. But, but just uh, to be clear, the Prime Minister gave you a personal commitment. Has he not let you down? No, because he, he has made, you know, the Prime Minister makes the commitment to deliver um, aspects of what he says he's going to deliver and the manifesto and so on and so forth. You know, he's got a whole government to run. And, uh, you know, I, I noticed, you know, a lot of people are trying to sort of get me to bash the Prime Minister, but I, I, I'm not going to do it because I think he's done more than his predecessors on this. I just do think that uh, we as, as ministers have a duty to stand on our manifesto, uh, to deliver it, you know, say we're going to do something and do it. Uh, and if we don't take responsibility for it. And that's, I'm afraid, you know, that's what people want to see in politics. But people, people still get want to know why it hasn't happened. It's an see. important issue. If it's not the Prime Minister's fault, you've got to explain why it hasn't happened. Well, uh, it, it's clear why it hasn't happened, because the uh, Northern Ireland Office has not brought forward that legislation. So, so it's Brandon look, Lewis's fault? Look, no, I'm sure Brandon's tried very hard as well. The reality is the system has not, has not worked. It has not produced for these people. And as we sit here today, there are two people going to court in Northern Ireland on Monday for offences 50 years ago. So, look, we have failed that test. We set ourselves that objective. We failed that test, and I take responsibility for it. It's not, you know, it's not, it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. I tried to do it in the correct way and uh, not ambush anybody. Uh, the system does what the system does. You know, I'm not going to play any of those games. Does the military feel this is a betrayal? I think the military community has felt, uh, felt betrayed uh, by governments of all the colours over the years for a long time, of course. That's why I'm here, Robert. You can't... You know, what people don't seem to understand is that you can't go and do the things I've done and see the things I've seen uh, and operate in the operations I've operated in and then come back, see these injustices and do nothing, right? You can't unring the bell. You can't see it and say, yeah, OK, we'll just let that slide and climb the greasy pole in politics. These guys deserve for a country to look after them for their needs to be recognised, for them to have a fair chance, right? Not an advantage, a fair chance in life when they come home. That was always my commitment from the start, OK? And if we start wavering from that, then clearly I'm going to have a problem in staying with the team. Can um, I just ask, though, but you did earlier today use the expression that this is the most distrustful, awful environment you've ever worked in. What do you mean by that? Look, I think uh, everyone who works in government will admit that, uh, I think, uh, behind the scenes. Um, but clearly, uh, they would never say it in public. And I just think... Well, just explain be, what it means. Honest, people want to know it's such a powerful uh, phrase that it matters. Uh, I think um, people, people will often say to you uh, what they think you want to hear or what's going to further their own agenda, uh, rather than uh, what is actually going on in the world. Because there's so many different... People have been in politics for so many different reasons, Robert. It's a personal thing. For me, it was always a mechanism to deliver for these people. I will do whatever it takes. Um, I think they deserve it. I think they deserve it like anybody else. Um, uh, you know, any of our five I colleague countries who look after veterans better than we do, they deserve it in this country, uh, and I'm going to make sure it happens, uh, whatever it takes. Before you came into politics... You were very down on politics. You basically said it was pointless and then you changed your mind and you gave it a go. Do you regret coming in? No, I don't, it? because uh, actually today everyone's talking about Northern Ireland veterans and I've been to, uh, on the phone to some of them and today's the best day they've had for two or three years. So, so no, you're no, stick as an MP? Yes, I've no... Look, people misunderstand the whole thing. I have no self-interest in this myself. Today has been a difficult day. It is not pleasant. Right, but these guys deserve someone who's going to. Be, I've just been luckier than the others. That's all. I've say, had the same experiences, but I've been luckier, and I've got a duty to use that to make sure their voice is heard in the corridors of power. And I will keep going. I mean, the events of yesterday felt to me as out of a sort of soap opera. You told Downing Street you wanted to resign. You were going to do it today. You were then called in to see the chief. Whip. He asked you to resign. You said you wanted to resign today. And then you got sacked by text. <laughs> I mean, this is extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, look, it's a bit of a disaster. Um, it's, it didn't go as I planned. Uh, I thought I was doing the right thing. But in thing. what world do you get sacked by text? 
Yeah, it's poor, right? It's poor, it's weak, it's embarrassing. Um, but uh, that's the way, you know, some people operate in Westminster. And the, the reality is, you know, a lot, of, a lot of my colleagues would get upset with me for sort of calling it out. But secretly in the corridors, they'll all say to me, you know, I'll, I'll see a colleague crying in a corridor or something and the way she's been spoken to in this, that or the other. We have to up the standards in politics, right? Because the country sees it. They see it. And we talk about credibility with politicians, right? The reason we don't have that credibility mm. is because we behave in this way. So we need to change. We need to get the ethos and values back into politics that people will see us and actually think, yeah, there's a career I want to aspire to because I'll make a difference. And I accept I'm totally sacrificing myself on that because everyone's going to hate me for it. I, I'm not really bothered, Robert. I came here for a very clear mission to look after these guys that I served with on operations, and I will do it whatever it takes. And just finally, we're almost out of time. I mean, one of the things that I find horrifying at the moment is almost whenever I'm out in central London, people ask me for money. There are people sleeping on the streets. Some of them are... Veterans. This is a scandal for a rich country, isn't it? Uh, some of them are veterans. I think the figures, the figures at times can be slightly, uh, slightly misleading. I do think this country has got a serious mental block when it comes to veterans. Because you look at things like Prince Philip's funeral, right? They're amazing people. They do amazing stuff. I've seen what they've done on operations, what we've asked of people for many, many years for the freedoms and privileges we enjoy, right? The House of Commons enjoys. They deserve to have a fair opportunity when they come home. And I think that is a, a really low base mark. For some reason, we've talked a really good game on this stuff, but we haven't delivered what we said we would deliver. And uh, the clock is running out. People are in court on Monday. These old veterans from Northern Ireland are dying. I'm not prepared to wait for them to die to get this right. Johnny Mercer, good to see you.